Well, joining me now is uh, Lucy Crahan, and she's a former teacher and author of the book Cleverlands, which details her first-hand experience of the education system in countries like Singapore, Canada and Japan. All three countries placed higher than the UK in today's PISA rankings. It's good to see you. Thanks for coming in. Um, what is it Singapore and the other countries are doing right that we're getting wrong? I think investing in teachers and paying attention to what's going on in the classroom rather than the school structures. So if you look at the results across the UK, in the past 10 years, we haven't actually changed. Um, we're still around about average or just, just above average. Um, and I think that's because we've been focusing on school structures rather than what's going on inside the classroom. Yeah, I mean, the school's minister today said, you know, this is an instructive study uh, and it points to the importance of more selective education and more grammar schools. That's not what... Why are you laughing? Not, um, I was at the, the briefing this morning from the OECD, from the director of the whole PISA study, yeah. um, and actually their message was quite explicitly that what different countries should be doing is reducing selection mm -hmm. uh, and actually delaying selection to later 15 or 16 because the results suggest that that is the way to greater equity. Um, and actually it's the countries which select earlier on that have the biggest impact of, of background on students' results. Mm. I mean, it is interesting, isn't it, because... Uh, the critics of too much, re um, uh, I don't know, reflection of this, of these uh, studies and tests, um, say that governments and educational authorities around the world will take out of it what they want to see, and they will simply use it to bolster a win, whichever way they can, bolster their own ideas as to education and teaching, and and perhaps some are suggesting that's what we've seen today with the response of the schools minister. I, I think I'd have, have to agree with you, and that's partly the reason I went out to do my research and to write my book, um, is so that the, the electorate and population at large can see what's actually going on in these countries to stop um, politicians from all different countries. It's, it's not just us mm. um, selecting just what's convenient for them. Mm. What mm. seems to be the difference, um, according to the OECD, is that other countries, and this is, I, I'm assuming is your experience as well, you can tell us, there is a real focus on the quality of the teaching. So teachers are, um, have a high status in society. They're paid well. Um, they are given the kind of respect that some argue doesn't happen for teachers in the UK. I think it's not all about pay. Pay certainly helps, um, and, and some countries that has been their route to raising the status has been to increase pay. But Finland, for example, actually their teachers aren't paid um, particularly well. It's, it's decent, but it's not high. The reason it's attractive there is more to do with um, the, not quite the lifestyle, but they certainly work less than teachers in England. So it's attractive. They're, they're well trained, they're respected because they're well trained. They spend five years in, in university to be a primary school teacher and obviously in, in schools as well, learning the craft side of things. But it is treated as a profession. And you know, for any profession, you know, those doctors or, or lawyers, that means uh, mastering a particular body of knowledge and then knowing how to apply it. And if, if you don't have that proper teacher training, it's no wonder that it's not as highly respected. Mm. Um, you um, did some of your work in, in Singapore. I, I lived in Singapore for, oh. for, for, for four years. And this was in the late 90s. And the, the discussion there was that they were having a lot of students and kids who were doing really well at school and they were great at learning by rote. Mm -hmm. But thinking for themselves, particularly in later life when it gets to university and so on, was difficult. And there was a movement by the Ministry of Education to try to move away from passive rote learning mm -hmm. and to have kids not just be good at passing exams and studies like this, but actually to be able to think critically for themselves. Mm. Mm. Is that a problem for those countries that are way above us in the school schools tables? Um, or is it something that they're managing to deal with as well as managing to get kids to do really well in tests mm. and so on? I think there's a huge spectrum in between um, the rote learning, which you certainly see in some countries, just parroting back what you're taught by the teacher, and critical thinking. And I think actually places like Singapore, they're, they're somewhere in between. PISA is actually a test of problem solving. Mm -hmm. So you can't just repeat what you learn from you a textbook just, because you're actually solving real life problems mm -hmm. and applying that knowledge. Mm -hmm. So actually I think they're actually doing very well. The, the teaching quality is, mm -hmm. is very high in Singapore in terms of getting students to actively think about things. They're working on the critical thinking. Um, I think that they're, they're still further to go and that's partly to do with this high stakes nature of tests in places like Singapore, Shanghai and Japan. Um, if you've been taught that there's the, the right answer to the test, then you're less likely to be thinking divergently and creatively. Okay. Lucy Crahan, thanks for joining. Thank you. And uh, you can see the full global education rankings on our website. That's at bbc.co.uk forward slash news. Just click on the education tab at the top of the page. There. More now.